Tuesday, 20th week after Pentecost, morning meditation, October 20th, 2020. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. Act of faith in the presence of God. Nomen Apatri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being culminated. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation. Through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin, Ave Maria Grazia, upon the Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in Mulieribus, Benedictus fructus ventris, tui Jesus, Sancta Maria Mater Dei, or Pernobis Peccatoribus, Nuc in the Hora Mortis Nostre, Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Secret Eret in Principia, Nuc et Semper, and Secula Seculorum, Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful. Kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created. Shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful, by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation to Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. What makes the Holy Mother Teresa an object of our admiration is the steadfastness of soul with which she strove to accomplish whatever she knew was acceptable to God. She taught her children that, quote, divine love is to be acquired by a determination to work and suffer for God, unquote. Let us consider the burning love which this seraphic saint entertained for God. To hear her, it seemed impossible that there could be in the world a single person who did not love God. And she would say, quote, My God, art now thou exceedingly lovable on account of thy infinite perfections and of the infinite love thou bearest towards us? How then can there be anyone that does not love thee? Unquote. Most humble though she was, yet in speaking of love, she did not shrink from saying, quote, I am all imperfection accepting in desires and in love, unquote. The saint has left us on record the following excellent instruction, quote, Detach your heart from everything. Seek God and you will find him. On the other hand, unquote. On the other hand, she used to say that it is easy for those who love God to detach themselves from the earth. Quote, Ah, my God, we only need to love thee truly for thee to make everything easy to us, unquote. Again, she writes, quote, Since live we must, let us live for thee, so that our selfish interests may at last disappear. 
What greater advantage can anyone gain than that which is to be found in pleasing thee? O oh, my delight to my God, what shall I do in order to please thee? Unquote. She even went so far to say as that she would not be made sorry at seeing others in heaven more happy than herself, but that she could not make up her mind to see anyone love God more than she should love him. What makes this saint an object of our admiration is the steadfastness of soul with which she strove to accomplish everything she knew to be acceptable to God. She used to say, quote, There is nothing, however painful, that I am not prepared courageously to undertake if I were set before me to do, if it were set before me to do, unquote. Hence she gave it as her instruction that, quote, Divine love is to be acquired by determination to act and to suffer for God. For, as she said in another place, the devil has no fear of irresolute souls, unquote. To please God, she even went so far, as is well known, as to make a vow of performing whatever was the most perfect. And since sufferings endured for God are the strongest proofs of love, she desired to live for nothing but to suffer. Therefore, she wrote, quote, It seems to me that there's no reason to live except to be, except it be to suffer. And this is this it is for which I most fervently pray to God. To him I say with my whole heart, Lord, either to suffer or to die. I ask of thee for this and nothing more. Unquote. Her love became so ardent that Jesus Christ one day appeared to her and said, quote, Teresa, you are all mine and I am all yours. Unquote. So dear did Teresa become to her spouse Jesus that he sent once one of the seraphim to wound her heart with a dart of fire. At length she died as she had lived, all inflamed with love. When the end of her life was drawing near, all her sighs were for death, that she might go to unite herself to her God. Quote, O death, she said, I know not who can dread thee, for in thee is life. Serve thy God, O my soul, and hope that he will bring thee a remedy for thy pains. For this reason she composed the affectionate canticle of love that opens with the following words, quote, I live but for, from myself and far away, and hope to reach a life so high that I am forever dying because I cannot die. When the holy viaticum was brought to her, she exclaimed, quote, O oh, my Savior, the longed-for moment is at last come. Now begins the time when we shall each see each other face to face, unquote. Then she died of love, as she herself revealed, after her death. O oh, my seraphic saint, thou art now rejoicing in thy God, whom thou didst love so much during thy lifetime, when in constant danger of losing him. Obtain for us by thy prayers the grace that we may go to love God in paradise with thee forevermore. Amen. Act of Consecration to St. Teresa O seraphic virgin, well-beloved spouse of the divine word, St. Teresa of Jesus, I, insert your name, through very, though very unworthy to be thy servant, yet encouraged by thy great goodness and by the desire I have to serve thee, in the presence of the most holy trinity, of my guardian angel, of the whole heavenly court, choose thee today after Mary for my mother, my mistress, and my special patroness. And I take the firm resolution always to serve thee and to do all I possibly can that others may serve thee. Therefore, O oh, my seraphic saint, I supplicate thee by the blood thy divine spouse shed for me to receive me among the number of thy devoted servants. Assist me in my necessities. Obtain for me the grace to imitate thy virtues by walking in the true road of Christian perfection. Aid me particularly in prayer and ask God to give me this glorious gift that thou didst receive in so eminent a degree in order that contemplating and loving the sovereign good I may avoid in my thoughts, words, and deeds all that might offend or be even in the least displeasing to thee and my God. Accept this little offering as a mark of my engagement to thy service, and assist me during my life and above all at the hour of my death. Amen. Spiritual reading, the teaching of St. Teresa on the love of God and our neighbor. One, we must love God perfectly. That is, we must love him above all things, so as to be willing to die rather than commit the least willful sin. St. Teresa says, quote, May God deliver you from deliberately committing even the most trivial sin. 
For, she adds, the devil, by means of the smallest things, opens a way through which greater things may enter. Unquote. Again, she has this admonishment. Quote, True devotion consists in not offending God and being resolved to do nothing but what is good and holy. Unquote. We must love God with our whole heart, ever desiring to arrive at a higher degree of perfection in order to please him. St. Teresa observes, quote, God will not suffer any good desire to go unrewarded, even in this life. She also says that our Lord, ordinarily, does not confer many signal favors, quote, except upon those who have greatly desired to love him, unquote. But to desires we must add actions by overcoming with fortitude human respect, our own repugnances, and all worldly interests. We must love God continually and on all occasions. And for this end, we must direct and offer all to him, even our indifferent actions, such as our eating, diversions, walking, working, every breath we breathe, uniting all with the actions of Jesus Christ and of the Blessed Virgin when on earth. Moreover, we must cheerfully suffer all adverse and painful things, conforming ourselves, uniting ourselves to the will of God in whatever he pleased to do in us and for us. Upon this, St. Teresa has left the following excellent sentiments, quote, And what more can we wish to gain than the testimony of doing what is pleasing to God? Unquote. And she explains what this testimony is. Quote, Whilst we live, our gain does not consist in endeavoring to enjoy God, but in doing his will. Great is the fruit of this giving of our will to God, for it induces God to unite himself to our lowliness. True union is the union of our will with the will of God. Unquote. To promote this and keep alive the flame of divine love, we must make frequent acts of love during the course of the day, but particularly when we approach Holy Communion and during the time of meditation saying to God, my most beloved and only treasure, my God, my all, I love thee with my whole heart. I give myself to thee without reserve, and I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, desires, and affections. I desire, I sigh, I seek for nothing but thee alone, my only life. To please thee is my only delight. Do in me, do in me and with me whatever thou pleaseth. My God and only good, grant me but to love thee. I ask for nothing more. Two, in order to maintain the union of the soul with God, we must exercise charity towards our neighbor. As regards the interior, it consists in wishing the neighbor the same good that we wish ourselves. In not wishing him evil, we do not wish ourselves. In rejoicing in his good and regretting the evil which befalls him, although we may naturally experience some repugnance in doing so. As regards the exterior, one, we must not murmur against the neighbor, deride or laugh at him, but speak always well of him and defend or at least excuse his intentions. Two, we must console him under afflictions. Three, we must succor him in his necessities of soul and body, particularly in sickness. Four, we must condescend to the neighbor, as St. Teresa expresses it, in all that is not sin. Five, we must not give our neighbor bad counsel or bad example. Six, we must occasionally reprove him, but mildly and seasonably, but not when we are agitated with passion. Six, we must above all endeavor to render good for evil, at least to speak well of those who injure us, treat them with meekness, and recommend them to God, turning away our thoughts from the annoyances harshness, and provocations, which we consider we have received from them. As a conclusion to this short practice, we must note, amongst others, the following maxims on perfection, which St. Teresa has left us in various parts of her works. Quote, All our efforts produce little result if we do not get rid of self-confidence, so as to place our confidence wholly in God. Quote, because we do not interiorly give all our affections to God, so neither does God give us all the treasures of his love. Quote, may God deliver us from ostentatious devotion.
Quote, I've often found that there is nothing more efficacious than holy water for driving away the devils. Quote, all that we can do is but nothing compared with a single drop of the blood which the Savior shed for us. Quote, if we do not put an obstacle, God will not hesitate to grant us the assistance necessary in order to become saints. Quote, God does not leave without reward a single glance towards heaven accompanied by the remembrance of him. Quote, the Lord wishes for nothing from us but a resolute will in order to go on to accomplish all that remains to be done on his part. Quote, God never sends a pain which he does not afterwards repay by some favor. Quote, if the soul does not keep itself apart from the pleasures of the world, it will soon become careless in the way of the Lord. Quote, do not mention your temptations to imperfect souls, for you will do an injury both to them and to yourself. Communicate them only to the perfect. Quote, let your desire be to see God. Your fear be to lose God. Your joy be whatever can conduct you to God. Quote, live Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and Teresa, now and forever. Amen. Concluding prayer. I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. The love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee. And I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and grateful as I have been, even until now. No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary, in nomina patri, fili, spiritus sancti. Amen.